The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Our guests today are artist, author, and children's favorite, Tommy DePaula, and Constance Congdon, playwright. Their collaboration on the 1990 production, Mother Goose, at Children's Theater in Minneapolis is delighting audiences. Tommy and Connie, it's wonderful to have you here today. Thanks, Gretchen. And I'm looking forward to the real background and scoop on how you got involved with, <laughs> with children's theater and how the two of you developed your collaboration. Okay, you want me to start here? Sure. Okay, it was 1981. Um, John Clark Donahue, the former dir artistic director, contacted me to, uh, with the possibility of um, doing Clown of God uh, as a stage production. And I had uh, been introduced to the children's theater, and had also been doing my own um, had my own children's theater group in New Hampshire, where I was teaching, out of the college that I was teaching at. So I knew all about children's theater here in Minneapolis, and just jumped at the chance to work with um, with the theater. And um, I was asked if I would come out and stay here uh, during the whole you know post pre-production rather uh, phase so that I could you know say no that's not how they walk no that's not how they look etc and it was really exciting it was February I might add so my travel agent said I've got to stop coming out here in the winter because I was here last year for the flower show that now this year it's again winter but um, uh, that was such a tremendous um, uh, tremendous success and it was amazing I realized how faithful to literary material children's theater was and still is. Um, years went by and uh, uh, John Cranny, the present artistic director, contacted me and said we'd like to have a deeper involvement with you. Would you be interested? And I said absolutely. And because you know I have a theater background as well as an artist background and it's a nice way to get my theater fix you know every once in a while. Um, but um, they did. We did Streganona, which was the three Streganona books put together in one production, written by Dennis Rosa. And I was asked if I would design the costumes and oversee the scenery design, which I did. Um, and then two years ago, we did Merry Christmas Streganona for the Christmas show. And again, I designed the costumes and was around to say, no, that's not the color of Streganona's roof. And her dog looks like. I mean, her cat looks like this. Her rabbit looks like this. And then um, about a year ago, I was asked. Uh, if they could do um, a Mother Goose based on my Mother Goose. Now, that's a little different because I didn't write the Mother Goose rhymes, and I said, sure, but they wanted to have my look, and I said, I'd be very happy to uh, collaborate, and uh, John asked me, he said, well, how would you feel about Connie Condon writing the script? And I was thrilled because I had seen Connie's previous uh, efforts and successes. In fact, we met at the opening of uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy. That's right. Well, what in the idea of doing Mother Goose as a play is intriguing because we usually think of it as just little verses. So mm -hmm. I'm real interested to know how did you adapt a real classic children's book into a stage play? Well, I, um, I took the uh, rhymes quite literally the way I, I took them when I was a child. You know, um, that the, uh, the little girl who had a curl right in the middle of her forehead was about a real little girl. And Mary Mary Quite Contrary was uh, about a bratty little girl. And um, uh, little Tommy Tucker was a real person, just the way I, I remembered them as when I was a child. So um, using that premise and uh, knowing then that you wanted, you know, the audience wanted to experience as, and I knew f for the little kids, they wanted to s hear as many of their rhymes as they could, um, the deal was, uh, that it all must be one day. And uh, so that's what I did. Uh, I just sort of took, 
uh, two little children uh, characters into Mother Goose Land, and uh, and they experience a whole day with Mother Goose. And because uh, the thing that struck me so much, and particularly about Tommy's drawing, because the drawings of a Mother Goose that I saw as a child were always a little scary. You know, she had a hook nose and and uh, like a witch's nose, and sometimes ha would have a witch's hat and and. Uh, but when I saw this book, it was, it was really a revelation because for the first time I got this idea of who Mother Goose was. And uh, having, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a mother myself, and uh, it seemed to me that a really good premise for it would be what if Mother Goose had to deal with all of the problems in this book? <laughs> <laughs> I love your phrase. My Mother Goose is having a really bad day. <laughs> yes. So it's about Mother Goose having a really, really bad day. But th what you get, I think, when you watch it is that it's th she makes it clear that this happens a lot. I mean, that she has several... Parents yeah. will empathize then mm -hmm. with the play as <laughs> well as the right. children. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And the, 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 pr uh, the idea of the children going into Mother Gooseland actually comes right from the book. So, you know, because that's the one thing we have to always be careful about, you know, is because, well, children know my book so well, and I tell playwrights, I tell designers, uh, you can't do it that way because it's pink in the book. It better be pink on stage. But the children start right here in the beginning of the, you know, on the um, uh, half title page. And I named them after us. This is Tommy. <laughs> and I named her Susie because that's my, my middle name. My, some of my family calls me Susie. And, um, um, and, of course, Tommy turned out to be, that's a great name because there's so many Tom Rhymes. And uh, of course, Tommy gets in a lot of trouble in the book because he's mistaken for <laughs> the all another mistake. autobiographical like play. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always being mistaken. Well, you you brought one of your characters. Yes, today, yes, yes. And we well, we brought a lot of show and tell stuff too. Uh, that's it. another interesting thing is translating my visual images onto the stage uh, with with great um, uh, fidelity. Uh, and this is one of the, uh, there'll be lots of puppets. I think there are 40 some odd puppets as well as mm -hmm. what, 20 some odd actors. Uh, this is one of the three blind mice. He's not quite finished yet, but the prop mm -hmm. shop yeah, at Children's the Theater. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I took them from this one because I thought they looked rather nice with their little coats. And, mm -hmm. and they have great lines. You know, they, they can't, they're having trouble getting their tails back on. They're waiting for Mother to come and put them on for them. <laughs> but um, they, we have to watch these because everyone that walks through the prop shop is ready to take them home. You know, they're, um, they'll have little little, little canes, hands and and little things. feet, little, little mice rat and feet. These yeah. will then be moved across the stage. Well, I don't know. I don't know how Myron, Myron Johnson is the director for the production, and uh, Myron, as you know, is a um, has his own dance company here in Minneapolis, uh, the Ballet of the Dolls, mm -hmm. and he's really quite brilliant. Connie and I are both thrilled to be working with Myron because yeah. he's so creative. Uh, and he just has, he knows, he has all these puppets at his beck and call, and so um, he will use them. I have, I don't know, I want to, I want to stay out of rehearsals as much as I can because I want to be surprised. I want to be well, since thrilled you're not and doing surprised. The stage, you know, the yeah, sure. yeah, you can right, do the right. costumes. I'm in, yeah. intrigued at the costumes you brought. You well, you asked me when we got here um, the, about the color. Now, um, what I do when I design costumes, it's, the, it's been true for all the shows I've done at Children's Theater, because my color is so unique and so distinctive, um, well, the first thing I do, uh, Gretchen, is I take the drawings from the book and then I do costume sketches, there's some over there, for the cutters and the people who are going to make the costumes. They need a little bit more information, and you'll see that I've done like the way the collar will look for the little boy. And the children, the real children, have real clothes and then fantasy clothes when they go into Mother Goose Land. But the thing about the color is that we can't find fabric that looks like my color. So we take very reasonable materials like canvases and duck and other cottons and then base dye them. And Mary Culligan, the dyer at the theater, is really brilliant. And um, because this show has a lot of pattern in the book, a lot of plaids, a lot of... Um, stripes, a lot of uh, flowered pattern. Um, this plaid has all been handmade. And all of the patterns in the show will be hand painted. Here's the shirt that goes with these trousers. Now, how's that for a combination? Wow. <laughs> Much like your sweater. Much like my sweater, right. <laughs> um, we, we, it's wonderful putting children in these things, too, because children suddenly get in them and go, Wow! <laughs> and stand in front of the mirror, and uh, you could just see them say, "I wonder how I can steal this and wear it to school." Um, because we are going into fantasy land, uh, 
There are, there's a wonderful character that Connie's written, which is a pig, and we brought the beginning of the pig head here. I don't know whether you can reach that, Connie. Yes. And uh, Janet, and I can't remember Janet's last name, Janet worked with the Muppets for eight years in New York with uh, Jim Henson, and we're very lucky to have Janet doing our masks. This one is particularly clever because if you see the underpinnings, it's a welder's helmet. This is, this is air conditioning foam, and it's very light, and she's cut it and pieced it. The actress will put her chin in this little chin strap, and when she talks, the mouth, the mouth, will, will, the mouth will move. And this is a charming pig because she wants to be, she's an actress and she wants to play the role of the cow who jumped over the moon who's ill. So <laughs> she says things like, I can do that, I can be a cow, you know, as any, act, any good actress can, right? Absolutely. Right. So that's the beginning and this will be covered with stretch material and then painted. And this material here is where the actor will see through, um, it's buckram. It's but called. it's definitely absolutely recognizable as one yeah, of your characters. Right, exactly. mm -hmm. Children, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Your, your books come to life, right. and that's <laughs> what is exciting. And then I brought one of the I brought one of the fantasy wigs because I think this is kind of fun. Um, the wig maker Ivy uh, Lothborough, uh, Lonsborough, I guess. I'm terrible with names. I know their first names. So anyway, please excuse me, Ivy. Uh, but um, I said to her, okay, when they go into fantasy world, um, I'm so tired of using yarn for. You know, for hair at children's theater or so. Let's come up with something else. So I said, all right, let me, let me think of some materials. So she's using about five different materials. Now this is just curling ribbon. And on the actress, it looks so great. It'll be sprayed down just a bit to take some of the shine off of it. Um, I keep on saying, wait, you know, because once it's off, you can't get it back. So it may just be really spectacular. And of course it's made the way that, that all wigs are made in the yeah. theater. These are, it's individually tied onto anyway, a skull cap. I can get this off here so you can and, see the uh, inside. Most people don't realize that most of the hair we see in the theater, um, like Cinderella, Charity Jones who plays Cinderella in the present production that's playing at Christmas time, children's theater, uh, is all wigged. She wears, it's none of her own hair. Even her. And this, of course, is made to fit this particular uh, actor, actress. And then these are all tied on this mesh. An amazing, amazing amount of work. Yeah. But as you said, the children great. will definitely know this isn't real hair, right. unlike the other right. wigs. Mm -hmm. yeah. it will be a fantasy. A little Tommy gets um, a wig made out of orange pipe cleaners for his red hair, which is sort of great. Will it be curly or will it stick uh, out no, it's, it's, he's got sort of a punky, spiky mm -hmm. hairdo. And, uh, uh, and uh, Susie's. Oh, we're using chore boy or chore girl, you know, that plastic stuff for, for some of the hair. Yeah, yeah. So it's really great. Uh, that's, the, um, that's the interesting thing about children's theater. Um, <laughs> when I saw um, Connie's uh, play, um, our script for uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy being done on the stage, I was sitting next to um, Garland Wright mm -hmm. an opening night from the Guthrie. He had just come as artistic director. And uh, I love this story. You know, this rock rolls on stage, right? This enormous rock and opens its mouth and speaks. And Connie wrote these lines saying, what, they, what are they? Or? Oh, they're, they're not terribly clever, but they yes, were the, they big, the biggest line. He says, hello, I'm a rock. <laughs> <laughs> and just the house came down. It's really, it was really humbling dream, as, right? as, a, as a playwright to know that <laughs> your greatest line so far has been, hello, I'm a rock. And this rock spoke and then said, well, I've got to be rolling along and rolled off stage. And Garland Wright said, I hate this place. I want to rock on stage. <laughs> and of course, that's the wonderful thing about children's theater sure, is that we you can, can do it. And the humor, the kids would just mm -hmm. love that. And, and it's nice thing. that, you know, I do the same thing with my books. And, and Connie's script for this is wonderful because there is stuff for the grown ups in it, too. A good children's book, you know, I don't worry about keeping the attention of children. I worry about keeping the attention of the grown ups who are going to be reading my book to children. And so you, you always have to slip in a few grown-up things, and mm -hmm. there are in this. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful yes, script. Absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. I think that, that is one of the beautiful things about children's theater. There's always a little sophisticated mm -hmm. humor or just mm -hmm. the very staging and sets of the right. plays are very appealing to yeah. grown-ups. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of the things that, as you know, that I do, um, when I got the project to do a Mother Goose book, um, I said to my editor at Putnam's, Margaret, the world does not need yet one more Mother Goose because if you look through books and print, you'll see endless lists of Mother Goose. And, and of course, a good, she, Margaret being a good publisher, she said, ah, but the world does not have a Tommy DePaula Mother Goose. And I was caught, you know, hook, line, and sinker. But I've, I did about six months of research on the rhymes before 
I got involved in the book at all, and Peter and Ioni Opa, Opie um, from England um, are the great mother goose and nursery rhyme authorities. By the way, they're also honored in the play. Yes, I named they are. A, I named a character oh. after Peter, and I named a other than Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, I named a character after Peter and another character after Iona. So they're, memori so, so they're memorialized. Sort of, they're memorialized. Well, and more yeah. than their yeah. collection yeah. at yeah. Oxford. Mm -hmm. or but what they said lovely. was, um, what she said was, if you're doing a version, uh, an edition for children, she was criticizing many of the Mother Goose for children because she said that they didn't have a picture for every rhyme. And, and on the long episodic rhymes, there was not a picture for each stanza. And for some reason, reading that, I thought, okay, that gives me a way to do my book. But at the same time, I realized how much Mother Goose nursery rhymes belong to very young children. And um, I mean, you know me well enough and long enough that um, you know I really feel my responsibility to young children, uh, very young children especially. And I hate it when grown-ups take something that belongs to children, like Mother Goose or like a fairy tale, mm -hmm. and turns it into some campy, um, grown-up, sophisticated, sophisticated mm -hmm. you know, double entendre humor or whatever, but takes it away from those children. And I must say that the things that, I, I must pay Connie this compliment, the things I've seen her translate from book to stage, it's been what now? Raggedy Ann and Andy, Rem and yeah. Rembrandt takes, takes a, a walk, walk, and now this. Mm -hmm. Connie has that same respect for children, which is very exciting, and so does Myron. So um, this is going to be a show for very young children, and everyone's going to love it, but young children, it's going to still belong to them. Well, that's Absolutely. wonderful because they need that, and one of the things that we're finding in children's services is a lot of children don't know the familiar nursery rhymes. Mm -hmm. They come to story time, they haven't heard them. Yeah. They're even starting school, so some kindergarten teachers I know are introducing the Mother Goose uh -huh. rhymes. And because every kid in Minnesota <laughs> knows Tommy <laughs> DeFallon's art, it makes it especially appealing to have your book. I also think that um, adults who are buying gifts for children often choose a Mother, gift, mother Goose as a baby gift. Mm -hmm. And adults have many different tastes, and mm -hmm. they pick the illustrator that best personifies yeah, what they so. like. Yeah. So there can never be too many. Mother Gooses, well, except maybe a, this is the definitive well, you know, the, version the, and, at this uh, point. The, the show opens in January, uh, January 12th, 1990, and right around the same time, and I can't wait to see it, Shelley Duvall is doing a Mother Goose, you know, on, for television, for video, and I've seen some uh, early footage, and she's doing just what Connie and I are not doing, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I really should knock yeah. a person I don't know personally, but I really do feel like ZZ Top plays, the or three men in the tub. The tub. It, it, it sounds like it's a little, it's too hip, but of course, yeah. uh, and, and you wonder what the audience is ultimately for, for something well, like that. Well, you can't fool around with Mother Goose and make her a gift. Well, <laughs> well you know, because you know, you'll eventually get the child saying like they did in the Emperor's New Clothes, you know, Daddy, you know, the king, the Emperor's naked, and mm -hmm. I don't ever want a child to say that about me. <laughs> or when we saw a production together, um, a, a child said, Mommy, I don't like this. I want it to change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was yes. like we were sitting there thinking, okay, let's, let's keep that in mind as we're working <laughs> on this show. <laughs> well, are you involved with the casting? Are you working with the... Oh, the, the casting's already done. We're in rehearsal now. So. Uh, we're in our second week of rehearsal, and uh, so we're, we're far into the production. And then, you know, that's an interesting process that a lot of people don't know about, like mm -hmm. why, why you, the playwright, have come to rehearsals. Well, um, I've been a playwright for many, many years, and I, uh, I've done three projects for the Children's Theater, but I was um, wooed um, by John Cranny because I was at the Hartford Stage Company as a resident playwright there. And um, I know from my experience as a playwright that being in rehearsal is actually, I mean, that's the normal way. People always talk about it as if it's, it's something unusual, but in fact, that's the way plays have always been made. They've always been made that way. The playwright is always in rehearsal and uh, um, on a new play, and, in this, and it is a new play. So I make changes. I see things that are, you know, some things that aren't working, and I, I'm not wedded to something, so I'll make a change. Or I'll see something that Myron's doing that's very interesting, and I'll go, oh, well, why don't I do this? And uh, that's, how, that's how plays are made.
really exciting. You know, to be a sort it's of a hands-on thing. Right, an ongoing yeah. process. Were you doing the same thing with Streganona? Yes, you mean when I was I was co-directing yeah. that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Tom Olson, who wrote it, was sat right there with his typewriter, <laughs> and we'd say, "Oh, that doesn't sound right. How's this?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's um, that uh, that um, uh, that process is something that, I, that that the average person is unaware of, and you know that during the rehearsal period, even during costume fittings. I mean, I make changes when we get a costume fitting. Oh, the way I drew it may not look right on an actor. You know, um, or, uh, so we change it. Uh, we make it easier. We make it more difficult. Whatever, change colors. Uh, so you know th that process is very interesting. But ultimately, it's the presentation. It's the performance. That it's like a book. It's like uh, mm -hmm. you know, once you know, it's out of your hands all of a sudden, yeah. and you just hold your breath and pray. Mm -hmm. you know? So. I think usually the actors at Children's Theater, you don't need to worry about. No. No. no, it's a wonderful place to work. And um, I want to I wanna say that, you know, I, I find out that so many people in the, in the Twin Cities don't realize, they don't realize that this is a unique place. Children's Theater here in Minneapolis is a very unique place. There are, I, if any, I don't think there's any children's theater like it in the, in the, in the United States. In North States. America. In North America. It does the original um, types Yeah. Of well, I mean, people say, oh, what's the one like in Boston? What's the children's theater like in New York? And you say, what children's theater? theater? Yeah. And they say, oh, come on. And you say, no. You have a resource here that is very, very precious. And fortunately, it's, um, I think the community recognizes that and really supports it. Supports it, it indeed. And, uh, but it can always use more support, you know. <laughs> in terms of production values and, and the quality of work, it, it, it rivals any theater in the United States. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, the people that work there are from all branches of theater. And uh, there's some sort of stigma attached to children's theater that somehow it's not as good well, as adults. Often adult. children's literature, oh, children's yes. library services, yeah, right. everything. I know, yeah. and it's children's just it's so wrong. Yeah. And I've, I've told many of my, you know, uh, friends, playwright friends, director friends, that, um, that if they get a chance to work here, they absolutely should. Um, I mean, they, my first lighting designer was uh, for Raggedy Ann and Andy was Jim Ingalls, who at the same time was working on Nixon in China with Peter Sellers. And uh, so they, they hire the best people, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful theater. And they have the respect for children, mm -hmm. which, you know, I mean, those of us who work with children, yes. mm -hmm. That's the key. That's the secret. You know, I think, and what 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 better thing than to have the best theater be for children? Absolutely, well, just like the best literature. Yeah, yes. well, Stanislavski <laughs> himself said that. You know, when, when he after he had founded the Moscow Art Theater, and and he took his best actors and directors and set designers, and, and started the Moscow Children's Art Theater, and and the you know, people around the world were horrified that he was doing this, and he said, no, 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 no. They said, what are you doing? He said, oh, no, no, only the very best is good enough for children. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing to remember, I think, for all of us that deal with young people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We remember it, and it's a matter of making the rest of <laughs> right. society aware. Agree with us, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> we will try them someday. <laughs> Connie, you said that Raggedy Ann and Andy is on the road, though. Where? Yes. What um, is it it's, going to be in? Uh, it's on it's several major cities. I just saw it in, in Providence. Uh, um, and. Uh, I th the, the kids come home, I think, for, uh, well, it's kid and adult actor troupe, come home for Christmas, and then they go out again for some more cities. I don't know how many cities, but many, many and cities. it will be but true to the way Well, it, some of it had to be scaled down because we couldn't fly. You know, we had a ferry that flew, and it was quite wonderful, but yeah. you can't be uh, sure that every house you get into, every theater you get into, you're going to be able to do that with the safety regulations. So Myron came up with a wonderful... Uh, adjustment where a ferry uh, dances on a platform, but you don't see the platform, so it looks like this ferry is just dancing out in space, and that's that's quite lovely. That's mm -hmm. But isn't that exciting that uh, some of the rest of the country is getting to well, see yes, some of the productions of mm -hmm. Children's Theater? Do you Theater. think more of them will go on the road? Well, I've well got actually, my we've had we, we, <laughs> did, we have several. We've already had um, well, see, Little Women went out right. on tour. Mm -hmm. African Tales. African Tales uh, mm -hmm. did quite well. Raggedy Ann. Reggie Ann, and I think H Hansel and Gretel. Hansel out. and Gretel. Right. Um, I'm hoping that maybe they'll send out Strega, Nona, one of these days. Oh, and of course, Rembrandt takes a walk, went to the Soviet yes, Union. Yes, right. And That's right. That, uh, that was went with major because triumph. he was a playwright. Yes. yes, and that was quite wonderful. That I couldn't go. I was invited, and I had to go to the American Booksellers Association conference instead because they were launching my imprint.
Oh, your white My white bird, bird imprint, Damn right. Event. So I had to be there, and I missed the trip to the Soviet Union. Well, that was, oh, and that was time. really yeah. rewarding. Uh, I mean, the, the reception we got in the Soviet Union, and in the Soviet Union, they use adults playing children, and we use children playing children, and adults playing adults, so that was quite a revelation. And the uh, theater community turned out. The Bolshoi helped, helped us load in. I have friends from the adult <laughs> theater world that came to see it from the Soviet Union, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Tremendous. Sure. What about future collaborations? Oh, Have you we're got talking. anything in the drawing board? <laughs> well, if we don't collaborate, we'll party together. Right? Yes, Connie, yes. Connie lives yeah. in, in Massachusetts, not too far from my home in New Hampshire, and um, she's been to visit me once. Mm -hmm. It's coming again, I'm I hope. I'm coming again very soon. Yeah, for a Christmas party. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and I really would like to work with Connie some more. I'd like, to, I'd like us to try to come up with maybe something original that could then translate into a book. Maybe, yeah. you know, maybe stage first, book second, you know. Carrie, <laughs> a follow? A line of clothing. A line of clothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Actually, there are Mother Goose this sheets is, coming you know, out. This is, okay. this, is this is really great. I was telling Tommy that when my, my boy was little, uh, he had a tremendous color sense before he was turned into a, uh, uh, before he was inhibited by what boys are supposed to yes, wear. Right. And he would have loved this kind of thing. You know, it's very difficult to find something as wonderful as oh, this. Oh, I would love it. It goes with the set beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> and my sweater. You yeah. see, obviously I had a color sense from the, you know, from the age, age <laughs> one, right? Because uh, I've always been uh, uh, you know, marching to my own palette here. <laughs> as you describe in your artist story, <laughs> right, talking about right. drawing on your sheets. <laughs> yeah. Now next year, rumor has it that I'm going to be doing Madeline's Rescue for people who love the Madeline books, which, and I am a huge fan of them. Oh. So. So am oh. I, as are all children's librarians. In fact, isn't it Madeline's 50th birthday It might year? be, I Actually, think. Actually, I think it is. I year? think it is. Gee, everyone's string 50. Babar, Madeline. It must have been a good year that year, right? Uh, string and Nona has a few years to yes, go. Yes, she has a few years to go. <laughs> yeah. right. Right. Well, it's been wonderful having both of you here today, and congratulations on a successful, Thank triumphant you. Hey, addition to the yet. theater. Not, oh, not we yet, haven't not opened yet, 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 but break a leg. Yeah, break a leg. Break, yeah. break a leg. Except to a dancer. The of Mother <laughs> thank <laughs> you, Gretchen. And Thanks we'll for inviting us. Again. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy DePaula and Constance Congdon, a delightful pair. Thank you for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again.
This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency.